Hello students, Mr. Courtney here. In this video, we're continuing on aqueous solutions and solubility. And I'm talking here about the solubility of gases. And our objective here will be to identify the factors that affect the solubility of a gas. So gases are solutes. So yeah, we know an aqueous solution is created whenever we a solute is dissolved in water. So water is our solvent. Now that solute can either be a solid, a liquid, or a gas. In this lesson, I'm going to be focusing on creating aqueous solutions with a gas or using gases as the solute. And we can think of some common examples as of gases dissolved in aqueous solution or gases in aqueous solution. We think of carbonated beverages. Carbon dioxide is placed or dissolved in these substances. That's why they're called carbonated beverages. We also have lots of dissolved substances, dissolved gases in the blood, whether it's nitrogen gas, oxygen, carbon dioxide dissolved in the blood, and blood is an aqueous solution also. Or in the cytoplasm of your cells, you have lots of dissolved gases in there. So gases are also solids. So we can have gases dissolved in water to give us aqueous solutions. Gas and our sol solvent as water. So let's look at the effect of temperature on the solubility of a gas. Temperature and the solubility of a gas are inversely related. If you look at the, this graph here, look at the relative solubility. As you increase temperature, go in this direction, look at what happens to the solubility. The solubility decreases. But as we decrease the temperature, as we go in the opposite direction, the solubility increases. Hence the reason why when you when they make carbonated beverages is usually at a cold temperature. So that we're gonna increase the solubility. And if you store your soft drinks, your carbonated beverages at a high temperature, the gases come out of solution because the gases are less soluble at high temperature. So let's look at pressure on the solubility of a gas of a gas. If you look at the graph here, as partial pressure of oxygen increases, the saturation, the percent saturation or the solubility also increases. If we decrease the pressure, as we go from right to left, saturation also decreases. So that means pressure and the solubility of a gas are directly related. Okay, so in the production of carbonated beverages, carbon dioxide will be at, is added on the high pressure and low temperature to water to create what we call carbonated water. And the carbonated water is also known as carbonic acid. So the dissolved carbon dioxide is what gives carbonated beverage their fizz. So again, we're making use of the solubility of gases or the factors that affect the solubility of gas. They add the carbon dioxide on the high pressure because gases are more soluble on the high pressure and low temperature because they're more soluble on the low pressure low temperature sorry so as we see here we can create supersaturated solutions if we increase pressure decrease temperature we can create supersaturated solutions so on the high pressure more gaseous solutes or more gases can be added to this solution when we go to low pressure now, the gases will come out of solution. So when you open your carbonated beverages, that's that's that fizz you hear. That fizzing sound you hear when you open a carbonated beverage is because you're lowering the temperature. They're on that they're stored on that high pressure, and you're lowering the temperature by exposing it to normal atmospheric temperature. Um sorry, pressure, lower atmospheric pressure. So on the low pressure, the gases will escape from the solution. So impact on scuba divers, as you see from the graph, as the depth increases, pressure also increases. That means the amount of dissolved gases in the blood will also increase, and in the bloodstream will increase. Now, as the diver ascends, the pressure is going to decrease. The solubility of the gases decrease, and they are released from the bloodstream to be exhaled. Now, in the lungs, we have these tiny air sacs called alveoli, and they're responsible for the transfer of gases between the lungs and the blood. Now, if the scuba diver returns to the surface too quickly, 
the ga these gases will rapidly fill these sacs and they're going to be filled on the high pressure that's going to put them on the high pressure causing them to swell and burst this causes what is called a decompression sickness or the bends and it can be fatal if it's not treated quickly or treated early the patients the divers they're going to be placed in a hyperbaric chamber where the pressure of oxygen gas is increased making it easier for the patient to, patient to breathe so that means you're going to dissolve more oxygen in their blood so that they, it makes it easier for them to, to breathe and the pressure is going to be decreased slowly so that they can re-acclimatize or acclimatize at a steady rate so they, they don't want want them to have to go through that change too quickly again all right so hyperbaric chamber hyper above bar pressure so hyperbaric meaning above normal pressure now power plants and factories there they can use water as a coolant because of its high specific heat and if we look at this table here we see that water has a very high specific heat the next closest substance on this table is two times smaller than it so that means we take 4.14 4 4.14 joules of energy to raise the temperature of one gram of water by one kelvin now as the water absorbs heat the amount of dissolved gases will decrease when this hot water is released into the lakes and rivers it causes the temperature to increase and cause and, and, and it results in a decrease in the amount of dissolved oxygen in water. This decrease in oxygen makes the water inhabitable to plants and animals. Many of them will die and this is what we call thermal pollution. Now the gases are being physically separated from the mixture because they're dissolved. Remember when something is dissolved it's a physical change. So because the gases have been released now, they've been physically separated from the mixture of gas and water. So from a aqueous solution of gas and water. All right, solubility of solids versus gases. Which in conditions in four different um, containers of water? Which container will dissolve the most solid? So we have to be careful here. We're asked about solid. We know pressure has no effect on the solubility of a solid so we can ignore that and we know that the solubility of a solid increases with temperature so we're going to be looking for the highest temperature so the highest temperature is 40 degrees celsius which is in container t so that will be our answer choice which container would dissolve the most gaseous solids or most gases so we have to take into consideration both temperature and pressure Gases are most soluble at low temperature and high pressure. So we look for the lowest temperature with the highest pressure, which would be Q. It has the, high, the lowest temperature and the highest pressure. So let's summarize here. What would be if we increase temperature on a solid, what would be the effect on solubility? That would make it more soluble. If we increase temperature on a gas, it would make it less soluble. Decreased temperature of a solid would make it less soluble. Decreased temperature of a gas will make it more soluble. Increased air pressure on a solid, no effect. Increased air pressure on a gas, more soluble. Decreased air pressure on a solid, no effect. And we decrease air pressure on the gas, less soluble. So based on that information, why are gases and solids not considered complete opposites in terms of solubility? So we have to look at them in terms of how does temperature and pressure affect the solubility of solids and gases? When we look at it in terms of the solubility in, in ref, with reference to temperature, they're exact opposites. But because pressure has no effect on the solubility of a solid, right? So while the pressure will have a huge effect on the solubility of the gas, it has no effect on the solubility of a solid. So we're gonna, they cannot be considered complete opposites. They're only opposites in terms of temperature, but not in terms of pressure. So that takes us to the end of this one. And I'm talking about the solubility of gases. So until the next time, I'm out. Blessings.